Yeah, Konrad, good to see you. It sounds like a broken record, but I have to say we are still in turbulent times, you know, with a looming global recession, high inflation and an energy crisis in Europe. Uh, some of our peers have actually downgraded their outlook for the remainder of the year. Uh, but Clarion's strong set of numbers uh, yeah, seems to speak a different language. How surprised are you by this development? Hello, Kai. Yes, we are still in, uh, in turbulent times. Uh, and I would, uh, I would say I'm very pleased with the numbers, uh, first, first and foremost, um, with the numbers and how the quarter in the end uh, turned out. Um, I'm not completely surprised. Um, we did guide uh, for a slowdown in volumes in the third quarter in some of our segments. Um, but it is actually um, very good to see how we were able to raise prices further on a sequential basis from the last quarter to offset um, further increases, um, in particular in our energy costs. Uh, and I'm very pleased that we also recorded uh, strong uh, volumes, uh, particularly actually a recovery in our catalyst business. But Conor, before looking at the numbers and details, we should also mention that Clarion has a homemade challenge, let's say. Uh, we are still in the midst of a huge transformation. Has this transformation an impact on our performance? Yeah, you see very positive impacts from the transformation already. First of all, if you look at our portfolio, truly specialty chemical products that actually show that they are more resilient in a downturn that we are experiencing right now in, in some of our markets. Secondly, if you look at the operating model, we, as you know, made it flatter the organization. We, we delayed the organization, we're closer to our customers, um, and the business units are set up by segments, by market segments. Uh, this clearly is setting us up better for growth. And I'm particularly ple pleased to see in the third quarter a 9% organic growth in volumes. That is clearly higher than what our markets are doing right now. Yeah, so one part is, of course, organic growth in terms of volumes. The other part is uh, pricing. Maybe we could first look at all the numbers together and then look into the specific details per segment and potentially region. So overall, where do we stand in terms of sales growth? Yeah, overall, 27% year on year in the third quarter. Um, if you break that down, um, 18% out of that was actually pricing. And if you look at pricing uh, with that, we did offset uh, the raw material cost inflation, which were roughly 24% year on year. Logistics cost inflation, uh, logistics costs are easing, but still up 6% year on year. And finally, energy costs, which were up 60% overall, 6-0. So a very significant increase in the third quarter year on year. And in Europe, it was even a higher increase than that. So looking at that pricing, very important, this 18% pricing year on year, we did offset um, all of these cost increases with that. And then secondly, looking at volumes, um, as mentioned, 9% volume growth. With that, we clearly outgrow our markets, um, and that is obviously one of the objectives of our growth strategy. And in which segments do you still see volume growth and not only price increases? Yeah, we, de we did see volume growth in Catalyst. Now, that was partly a recovery. Um, we also see continued volume growth um, in our natural resources business, which is on the one side strong continued demand for our flame retardants. And on the other side, it is the recovery that we see in oil and gas. If you look at our care chemical business here, volumes overall came in flat from prior year, but we were able to sequentially increase further our pricing in care chemicals. Yeah, but now, Conrad, looking at regions, you mentioned Europe there, obviously growth is mainly driven by pricing. Uh, could this maybe be a starting point? Uh, I mentioned the looming global recession so that we see a softening demand uh, later on in other regions as well. How much of a concern is this softening or even lower demand uh, that we see, especially in Europe now? Yeah, I think realistically, we could say that Europe is in a recession already. So if you break out Europe as a region, what you saw is that volumes were negative for all three business areas 
low single digits, but they were negative for all three business areas in Europe. Now, um, is that reason for concern? Um, yes. Is it reason for panic? No. Um, we are. Uh, we have experienced, as you know, uh, in the pandemic, that our portfolio is quite resilient, uh, and actually, by taking the right measures, um, we should be able to weather this recession, um, even if this spreads into the United States. We should be able actually to weather it and to even come out stronger. If you look right now at our revenue growth, if you look right now at our profitability, we're actually in a better shape than we were prior to the pandemic. Yeah, maybe we're talking about profitability. We have so far talked about sales. Where do we stand with the recent developments? Or like you said, you know, pre-pandemic, uh, last quarter and, and the outlook. Yeah, pre-pandemic, um, as I mentioned, if you look at revenues, we are clearly above pre-pandemic levels. If you look at profitability, we're also clearly above pre-pandemic levels. So looking at our EBITDA margin, 16.8% uh, in the third quarter, that is up 230 basis points from pre-pandemic levels. It's actually up 130 basis points from last year's level. So on all these metrics, clearly uh, ahead of pre-pandemic levels uh, and clearly ahead from of uh, prior year. Now, looking at our outlook, we did um, uh, increase our revenue outlook. We thought we would end the year around 5 billion Swiss francs. Now we're guiding for 5.1 billion Swiss francs. And underlying, if you look at EBITDA margins, we should still be in a situation where we end the year above last year's EBITDA levels uh, underlying. Now, there is going to be some additional uh, restructuring charges ahead of us in the fourth quarter because we actually um, yeah, have made um, progress with a very swift implementation of our new operating model. And with that, uh, some, um, yeah, some, some one-offs in terms of restructuring charges will come in the fourth quarter. And besides this short-term outlook, we also confirmed our mid-term targets in terms of looking at 2025. I mean, that tells us that we're also still executing on our strategy and not only uh, yeah, remain in a firefighting mode. Uh, so, so maybe to ask about these strategic priorities in last quarter. One was obviously the divestment uh, of part of our business from the oil services area. Uh, how does that fit in our overall strategy? Yeah, this is uh, one of the building blocks uh, towards our 2025 targets in terms of growth, as well as in terms of uh, profitability improvement. But I will also say uh, that this is actually uh, a good thing for our overall sustainability profile in the company. Um, so, so if you look at it, um, this business was very much a resale business. Um, where we were actually reselling chemicals from all kinds of companies to the drillers for the North America land business. Um, it was only a relatively small percentage of our own chemicals that we were selling through these companies. And we found actually now a very, yeah, the right new owner for this with uh, Dorf Ketal. And another cornerstone, obviously, of the sustainability strategy is issuing a green bond, the first time ever, as I understand. Uh, what can you tell us about this? Yeah, this is a big milestone um, also for our sustainability strategy, because we now have access to green financing at very attractive rates. Uh, in the third quarter, we were able to place successfully 175 Swiss million Swiss francs uh, for our first uh, green bond uh, in an environment that was actually quite challenging. Um, what is an important thing to mention is that we have now established a green uh, sustainability financing framework, uh, which allows us to issue uh, more of these green bonds uh, in the future, if and when we have the eligible uh, projects in the company that uh, qualify for this. Yeah, Conrad, thanks a lot for this update. We very much look forward to hearing again uh, from you. We will probably still be in turbulent times next time when we talk about Q4 and the full year results of Clarent. All the best, Conrad. See you soon. Thank you, Kai.